everyone. Welcome to our LinkedIn Live conversation today in celebration of the inaugural Big Machine Music City Grand Prix. My name is Rachel Cote and I work on the communications team at Bridgestone. We're here in downtown Nashville, so if you hear any sounds throughout the event, we're just live in the atmosphere at our Bridgestone America's headquarters. And I'm excited to moderate today's conversation with our very own Firestone Racing Team, Director of Motorsports, Lisa Boggs, and our Chief Engineer, Kara Adams. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. As we give folks a few minutes to join, can you both tell us a bit about your background, what you do for Firestone Racing, and how you both got started in motorsports? Yeah, absolutely. I'll kick it off. I'm Lisa Boggs, Director of Motorsports, as Rachel said, and I've been involved with motorsports now since the mid-90s. Um, I've been very lucky to have a career in motorsports. I didn't grow up following it, but I started off my career at an ad agency that had a client that did sponsorship in IndyCar. And I just fall in love with it. It's a great way to support a business. It's great for sponsorship. It's a terrific family atmosphere. And so from there, I've had a number of roles with sponsors, with a team, with a large public relations agency, and now really sort of the dream job, bringing it all together here at Bridgestone. So it's been a great career, a lot of different opportunity. Um, and this is really, really sort of the pinnacle moment we're having right now for the Bridgestone team. Absolutely. And my name is Kara Adams, Director of Race Hire Engineering and Manufacturing for Bridgestone Americas. And I'm really excited to be here in Nashville for the Music City Grand Prix. And my background actually started when I was in college. I was going to school for engineering, inspired by, by my grandfather, who was an engineer for NASA, to go into science. But then I started into, into the whole idea of motorsports in college at the University of Akron when I joined the Formula SAE team. And I got to get my feet wet in the motorsports world and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could have a job someday where they would pay me to work on race cars. So here I am at Bridgestone and I have the pleasure of leading the most amazing team of engineers, chemists, technicians, and compounders that design, develop, and manufacture the tires that you're gonna see used here at the Music City Grand Prix this weekend. Wow, what great journeys you both have had. For those of you just tuning in, we're here to talk about Firestone Racing and that work that goes into keeping the NTT IndyCar Series rolling. Lisa, how does it feel to have IndyCar hitting the streets of Nashville this weekend for the very first time? So this has been a long time coming. Having the NTT IndyCar Series hit the streets of Nashville is not only great for Bridgestone, this is the home of Firestone, part of the Bridgestone family, so as Kara mentioned, we're gonna have Firestone race tires on the streets. So for our teammates, they really should and are taking a lot of pride in seeing the technology, all the work that goes into performing on the most probably sophisticated cars. They're a little like rockets with downforce going through our streets. So it's really a point of pride for everybody here. Um, it's great for the city, you know, this is our hometown and it really shows our commitment to the city and to the NTT IndyCar Series to bring an event like this here and showcase the city, the company, as well as the great fans that are gonna come out and watch these cars do their thing here on the streets. Totally agree. Nashville is a rising city and so is the NTT IndyCar Series. It's perfect timing for both of them to come together. Can you share with us the success IndyCar has seen over the past few seasons and some of the highlights from this season in particular? Yeah, so, you know, it's been really amazing to watch the journey of the NTT IndyCar Series and be a partner with them. We've been in the sport for over 100 years. And most recently, in the last two years or so now, Roger Penske and his team have now bought and are the stewards of the series, as well as the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Indy 500. And we can say it has been a testament to the resilience, the ability to pivot, what he and the team have done to keep this series not only afloat, but actually gaining momentum and coming out of this strong as ever. A couple of great storylines are, we've got, let's see, eight different winners in 10 races. We've got a great group of young guns followed by you know Scott Dixon, if you look at the points. We have the NTT partnership extended. We've got NBC signed on and more races on network. Um, you know, we're about eight races in um, to, to the series, and so we're really going to see a fight to the end. Our cars, we've got, you know, 27 cars, I think, on the grid. 
So that's a lot of strength. So there are a lot of really key indicators of the strength. And let's not forget, the on-track entertainment and the competition when these guys race is second to none. Ovals, street courses, road courses, short ovals, and the most exciting thing probably so far is we have a four-time Indy 500 winner in Elio Castroneves. Um, that's been a long time coming, and it's just absolutely tremendous. First win with the team, first time with the team, so the storylines and the positive energy are endless. That's great. And looking towards this weekend, can you share with us a little bit of what Firestone's role is and throughout the season? Yeah, sure. So Firestone is the exclusive tire partner for the race, and we've got a lot of different activities going on. Everything from, you'll see our signing and our branding throughout the city, our building has some signage. There's a wonderful area for fans to come, the Firestone fan experience. You can win prizes and take photos and see a display car and get coupons to go to our Firestone Complete Auto Care. It's a really holistic view. Our Firestone Direct partners will be out here. You can learn all about that new service. We've got Bigfoot. Everybody loves Bigfoot. Tires are huge and you can crawl on them and take a look and get a photo. And of course, our friend Firehawk will be here. So we're doing some hosting. So we've got a lot of different things going on that really, really looking forward to just really showcasing our city and this brand and the wonderful cars of the IndyCar Series. What a way to mark this special moment in our very own backyard. Yeah. Kara, with this being a new circuit, can you give us a little insight to what fans can expect over the street course? Sure, with new circuits like that, this is a great opportunity to stretch and flex our engineering muscles. So back in Akron, if we have a new circuit, what we like to do is come out and test, but it's kind of hard to shut down the streets of Nashville just so we can run a tire test. So we have to rely on virtual simulation. So we work with the track promoters and the track designers, also with IndyCar, Honda, and Chevrolet to understand the unique needs of this race course. So this is a really exciting race course, and you guys are in for a treat when you watch the race on Sunday. This track is the fastest street course course that we've been at since 2013 when we were back in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So this will be really exciting. Track speeds of almost 200 miles per hour. It's really going to be great for the teams to watch. Um, the bumpy circuit requires a unique construction that we use in all of our street course venues. So what we had used earlier in the year, in Detroit, St. Pete, and then we'll also be using a Long Beach coming up. It's our street course construction. It's meant to go really well over the bumpy curves and everything that we'll have here. So it can take it whatever this course throws at us. That's and of cool. course, yeah. one thing really quick, sorry Rachel, yeah. look at this, but there's the bridge. And the bridge. The bridge, guys, we can't forget, this will be, there's been versions of running over water, but this truly is unique in um, going over the Korean Veterans Bridge. They're going to come this way and then turn and go back the other way. So that's got some bumps, that's got different challenges, and I know the drivers are excited about it, and um, so are we, so that's just really cool and quite frankly it's a little hard to imagine when you're driving over it okay. that we're going to run indie cars at almost 200 miles an hour over this so yeah it's going to it's in true nashville style we are taking it you know right to the edge it's going to be very exciting to see them going over that truck bridge between the two straightaways they're the longest straightaways on the track so to hopefully see some passing going on there it'll be interesting yeah. and exciting to see Speaking of the tires that we're bringing, can you spend a little bit more time telling us the tires that we have, how many we're bringing this weekend to Nashville? Sure, we have over 1,700 tires this weekend. Each team, as Lisa said, there are 27 cars. Each team will have seven sets of primary tires to use, four sets of alternate tires, and we don't think it looks like rain at all this weekend, but if it did, we have five sets of rain tires that the teams can use. So our Firestone primary tires are a nice, durable, consistent tire, should have fairly the similar lap times over the Holstons, and the alternate tire is meant to be quicker initially, but then it drops off as lap times go on. So teams will be using some different strategy. The alternate tires are going to really help in those really tight turns coming over the bridge and coming back. So it'll be some really interesting to see what we have as far as the tire performance and how people choose to use their tires this weekend. And I think one thing that most people don't know is that all of our race tires are made by hand up in our uh, Firestone headquarters up in Akron, Ohio. Can you talk a little about the process and dedication that goes into those tires? Yeah, so we have teammates in our Akron, Ohio facility. And when we get to the track, everybody's always really proud because the tire goes on the car and you see a sticker that says 
made in Akron, Ohio, USA. And for all of our Akron-based teammates, that's something that we're really proud about. And to be here at our headquarters in Nashville, it's our town Nashville and our town Akron colliding. It's a really, really wonderful mix. So we make all of those tires and they're largely built by hand or by skilled technicians that have been doing this for years and years and years. So we have a great group of teammates there. They work on each one of the tires. Each one of them takes quite a long time to build, about an hour by hand, putting down pieces of material and it goes into a mold where it's formed and takes shape. And then it goes to Indianapolis, Indiana, and then on its way here to Nashville. Once it gets to Nashville, the teams have their wheels. We put our tires on the team's wheels and make sure they're inflated correctly, send them out to the team, and the teams will put them on their cars. That's great. And then one question for both of you as well. Knowing that the sport is somewhat dominated by males, and we've kind of worked through that, but you two are leading the way in IndyCar as a dominant female power, and just kind of interested to see how you guys have combated that, or what you see those strengths are within the series and why. Yeah, so we have, I would say, we've always had to some degree, at least in the time I've been around, you see, you see women in the paddock. But what's been really terrific is there are more of them, but importantly, and I think this is the key, it's the roles of which they're doing. So it's Kara and I as a team leading the, tire, the sole tire supplier, that's never been the case. You see women um, in pit stands, engineers helping call the race or data, whatever the need is. You see women going over the wall. You saw Peretta Autosport this year, you know, sort of a women forward team. So. Uh, they're there and they've been there. It's just now the roles and the opportunities are even greater and it's a family there So I feel like anybody that comes man or woman you need to do your job know your job and work hard It, it really doesn't matter. If you do a good job. You're in the family and you'll succeed and that's really true with anything I have a good friend that says the race car driver does the race car doesn't know whether the driver is male or female It doesn't care. It's a, truly a level playing board field both in the driving and the engineering of the sport. So if you can come in and if you can make a great product, if you can drive a car, if you can lead a team, it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like. It's, it's really about getting those results. So Bridgestone has been always a phenomenal team. We've had lots of great mentors through here. And to see the paddock growing with more and more females and more diversity has been really, really good. So we've been able to kind of track that and everyone supports each other. As Lisa said, it's a big family. You're starting to see women in all types of different roles. And one of my favorite memories of this year is walking down pit lane to check on some tires. And when we went down to check on them, I walked behind the Beretta Auto Sport car. And as we were behind that car, I walked and I looked at all of the little girls that were standing behind the fence. And anytime a woman over there did anything, they were cheering and they were, they were yelling. And you had all these little girls that were watching. And I thought, okay, that's the future of IndyCar. These are the future engineers. These are the future directors future drivers, so it's really great. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, we as a company, Bridgestone, um, and the NTT IndyCar Series um, are very purposeful and very dedicated to DE&I initiatives. There's a lot that they're doing, um, and they mean it, and they're, they're actually acting upon that. It's not just lip service, so I think we're gonna see even more of that, and that's what it takes. Absolutely, and it's great to see that growth within the paddock itself, as well in the series, because I think that's what's helping to continue the series and make fans tune in. Yeah, 100%. Well, so we appreciate both of you taking the time to chat with us today as we get ready to uh, for the weekend and the excitement that's building. You can literally feel here it from here in downtown Nashville. So appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Well, that's it for us today here in Nashville. We we'll really appreciate all of you joining in and hope that you tune in this Sunday, August 8th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN to catch the action live. Thank you so much.